Yoko, so uh, welcome everybody. This is patent terminology session six. Um, we are, oh, sorry, we've got a link. I just got an email from Oshima-san um, telling me that he can't reach the, um, he can't sorry, get in. Um, sorry, so this is session six. Um, I guess we'll be doing it um, without him today. Uh, let's get started. All right. So the first term we are considering is yoiki. Uh, this is sometimes translated as area, region, or domain. Um, the first, so as you'll recall, we typically use uh, the Merriam-Webster dictionary for the sources of our definitions, and they um, have several definitions. So what I do when I create these slides is I read all of the available definitions for these words, and then I um, figure out which word we're probably looking at in a general case. So, and then I put them on the slides for you to see for reference. So in the case of yoiki, um, this is the first definition for the word area. And it's used to mean the surface included within a set of lines. Um, for region, it's definition 2A, which means that there are other definitions that are um, more common in the English language. And here, this is the one that's most pertinent to most patent claims, uh, which is an indefinite area of the world or universe. And for domain, this is defined in definition three as a region distinctively marked by some physical feature. Um, this strange definition for region demonstrates the relevance of more specialized dictionaries. So if you go back um, now many years uh, in US prosecution, you know, people used to fight about which dictionary um, to use in a particular uh, litigation. You know, do we use a general dictionary? Do we use a technical dictionary? Which dictionary? You know, do we use a recent one or an old one? Uh, it was a very strategic battle because, you know, often the definitions of a particular word could influence the outcome of a litigation. Um, U.S. prosecution, thankfully, has moved beyond that. And, um, but for the purposes of our uh, patent terminology sessions, um, you know, I'm just making the point that we use a general purpose dictionary um, because we are not considering a particular art. You know, maybe you have an, a patent application that you're translating um, or prosecuting in which you know, the word area has a particular meaning or uh, it's in a technology where these have, you know, region might mean something special in semiconductors that it doesn't mean in fishing reels. Um, the issue here, as we look at these definitions, is that the word domain is not simply a region marked by a physical feature. Um, this definition says that the marking must be distinctive. It's distinctively marked by some physical feature. And so there's a concern that um, an opposing litigator, for example, might try to limit a claim reciting uh, the word domain to a specific embodiment in the specification, right? Maybe our specification describes something or maybe our figures show something um, 
that has a distinctive marking in it, or at least uh, someone will argue has a distinctive marking in it. And they will say that, you know, this must be, in, this distinctive marking must be within the scope of the claims. Um, because that's what the word domain means. It requires a distinctive marking. And so, you know, these claims also incorporate this additional feature. These claims are narrower than maybe what the patentee intended. And so therefore, you know, this accused infringer uh, does not infringe is their view. So in terms of which one to use, again, for some, in de uh, for some general purpose patent application, you know, we have concerns about the word region. Um, region is defined using the word indefinite, and that's going to raise concerns about scope. It, will also, it could also raise concerns during prosecution as well. Um, but, you know, using broadest reasonable interpretation, um, you're not, you know, it, it, your examiner will tell you that it's uh, a very broad meaning. The, but the fact that it has defined using the word indefinite definitely, or certainly, um, could raise concerns during some sort of litigation um, because it's not going to be clear which um, yo iki we're discussing. Um, domain is narrower than the word region, um, but this narrowness does not address the scope issue. Um, if we go back, again, you know, you can see that domain is translated as a region, I'm sorry, is defined as a region distinctively marked by some physical feature. Um, that doesn't really address um the scope of um the issues between the word domain and the word region and so in terms of which one should we use um i'm oh, sorry uh th this this fact that domain is narrower than region does not address this scope issue at the top of the slide Right. It doesn't necessarily mean that suddenly um, domain addresses the scope issue. There's still going to be concerns about what the um, how broadly that could be interpreted. And so the recommendation, again, for general patent application is the word area. Um, it's imperfect, but it might be your best general best option in a general case. Um, now we'll consider main or soko main. Um, these are translated as surface, face, or side. Um, for surface, we're looking at the first definition, which is the exterior or upper boundary of an object or body. Um, the fifth definition of face in Merriam-Webster is actually just the word surface. So there's certainly some um, identical scope there. But if we look at definition 5A5, that's defined as any of the plane surfaces that bound a geometric solid. Again, that's going to be more consistent in scope with the intent of most uh, applicants that I've seen. And then the second definition of the word side is a place, space, or direction with respect to a center or to a line of division. So um, side under the broadest reasonable interpretation. Um, if we have a claim that recites the phrase the left side, Frequently, that does not um, that is not interpreted by examiners as applicants intend. Examiners know this trick; they look for this word so that they can give it this kind of different definition. 
And they'll say that the left side might be the left portion of the top surface, right? You know, if you have some sort of um, mobile phone, um, you know, the screen is what many people would describe as the front. And so if we say the left side, which is, you know, the uh, perpendicular side where, you know, maybe the um, volume is or maybe the power button is, um, that's, you know, if we say the left side in, the, in a claim, our examiner isn't referring to that left surface with the button or the, um, with the button. He's thinking that it means the left portion of the top surface or, you know, just the left half of the device. And that's a very common thing. I'm describing a uh, U.S. prosecution I've handled. I'm probably describing several U.S. prosecutions I've handled. It's a very common tactic among, among examiners to require applicants to better define their inventions. Um, again, you know, we discussed how face can mean surface. And so it's very difficult for me to say that these two words have different meanings. Um, so, you know, either one of these will be better than side because they don't really raise this concern about, you know, left portion of the top surface or front surface. Um, but in my experience, examiners tend to prefer the word face to the word surface. Um, you know, again, the left surface might be the left portion of the top or front surface. Um, that's just kind of my view of it. I wouldn't be surprised to see an examiner take that position. But when you say the left face, um, that sounds a bit more, you know, like that perpendicular portion of a mobile phone that has, you know, the power buttons or the volume buttons. You know, that's, that's how we refer to that is the face. Um, but, you know, this is going to be a matter, it's going to be subjective. There is no clear answer. There's no objective truth here where, you know, I can tell you what will work 100% of the time. And so examiner interviews are a great, great way for applicants to learn, you know, if the examiner interprets face differently than surface. Um, I think they might, I'm sure some do. Uh, I would imagine some don't. Um, because face can mean surface, but I don't know who your examiner is on a particular case. You know, I don't know the preferences of every examiner. Um, you know, maybe examiners even change their mind over time. And so a good strategy is to interview because, you know, a Brief interview can save applicants um, a round of prosecution. It can save applicants a an RCE, a request for continued examination, and those are frequently like you know two thousand um, dollars. I'm sure it's probably saved somebody an appeal in the past, and those are even more expensive. And so that's why you know U.S. attorneys often promote interviews because. I, you know, I, I can't tell you what your examiner is going to say about the difference between surface, face, or side. Um, and so that's it. Um, a brief session today. Again, um, it appears Oshima-san had um, some difficulty in terms of um, accessing the link. Um, but the show goes on. I'm very sorry, Oshima-san. I'm very sorry for our attendees. Um, thank you for joining us. Be sure to um, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. We'll see you all next time. Have a good day.